Home Assistant is bringing in some new changes in this December release of 2024. Let's look at some of the changes that are coming up. In this new release, we have some changes related to scenes. Previously, when we clicked on a scene, it would immediately apply the scene and then you can edit it. Now in the new release, once you click on a scene, you now have a preview mode and a live preview mode. In the preview mode, you can change things like the name, icon and area but the scene does not get applied. Once you click on live preview, the scene gets applied and you now get full edit mode and edit various things in the scene and you will get a live feedback. So this will allow you to preview your scenes without it being activated. Next we have some changes related to the local voice assistant. In this new release, when you select a large language model conversation agent, you get this option such that the command will first be handled by the built-in intents and then only fall back to the LLM based agents. Like for example, when I say turn on the lights, it is handled by the built-in intents and you can see this in the raw output here. Now, when I ask it like what is the tallest building in the world, it gets redirected to the large language model and you can see the response in the raw output here. So this is a good way such that the known commands are handled first by the built-in intent which would be executed fast and processed locally while the complex queries are handled by LLMs thereby reducing the cost to communicate with the LLMs. Next we have an internal change in the Home Assistant Intent Language Parser that is now re-engineered to parse the intents faster thereby giving you a faster result. Usually it is the speech to text conversion that takes most of the time depending on the model and the system on which you are running Whisper. But after this the intent handling part would be faster compared to the previous Home Assistant releases. Now Home Assistant is written in the Python programming language and it has been upgraded to use Python 3.13. Now you don't have to do anything for this if you are running Home Assistant OS or Home Assistant container. Now Home Assistant had introduced an integration quality scale back in 2018 but it was mainly focused on the quality of code. Now Home Assistant is introducing a new integration quality scale that will also include the overall user experience of the integration to help you to make decision on which integration to use. They have introduced 4 tiers starting from bronze to platinum. Bronze indicates how easily it can be set up using the UI if the source code conforms the coding standards, automated tests and basic user documentation. While the platinum tier is considered the highest with things like implementing efficient data handling, reducing network and CPU usage. Along with this we also have no score, internal, legacy and custom tiers for integrations that cannot be graded in this bronze to platinum tiers. Now these tiers will be applied gradually as the home assistant team will take some time to complete evaluating the existing integrations. Now we have some new integrations from our community and they are also improving them. One that caught my eye was the music assistant integration. Previously we had music assistant available as an add-on but the integration with home assistant still needed the custom integration from hacks. Now from this release we have this already present in home assistant and you don't need the custom component from hacks. Now I have made a video about music assistant which is linked somewhere here as well as into the description below. Next we have quite some noteworthy improvements in the existing integrations from Reolink, Tesla Fleet, TP-Link and many more. Now we have quite many noteworthy changes but let's look at some of them. Firstly, we have the ability to download snapshots from the camera feed. You can open the camera view and click on download snapshot to download a snapshot of the view. Next, if you edit automations in YAML mode, you now get an error in case the YAML parsing fails with this red indicator. Now all these changes are based on the beta release of Home Assistant and they might be changes in the final release. Now if you like to see such updates, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. If you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.